Hi, my name is Jim, and in today's video, we're going to show you how to get started with Hasura GraphQL and Yugabyte DB on GKE. Now, if you're new to distributed SQL or to GraphQL, here's a few things that might help orient you. First of all, GraphQL is a query language for your API and a server-side runtime for executing queries by using a type system that you define for your data. Now, what this does is that it allows for the fetching, the modifying, and the subscribing to real-time data updates. So think of selects, think of updates, think about uh, being able to push uh, data modifications in real time up to your clients. Now, the typical use cases for GraphQL are going to include microservices as well as mobile apps. Oftentimes, people look at GraphQL as an alternative to using something like REST. Popular open source GraphQL projects that you might have heard of are going to include things like Hasura as well as Apollo. Now, with Hasura, because that's the focus of today's video, uh, Hasura is an open source GraphQL engine that lets you deploy instant real-time GraphQL APIs on top of Postgres or Postgres compatible databases like Yugabyte. Now, you might be asking yourself, what is Yugabyte? Yugabyte DB is an open source, high performance distributed SQL database that's built on a scalable and fault tolerant architecture that's been inspired by Google Spanner. It's Postgres wire compatible, uh, which means that uh, any sort of third-party client uh, tool or application that supports Postgres is very likely going to work with Yugabyte right out of the box. Yugabyte also has the benefit of supporting advanced RDBMS features like triggers and stored procedures, UDFs, and more. Okay, so what we're going to show in this demo uh, is going to be the following. The first thing is that we're going to assume that you've got uh, the prerequisites already dialed in, which is that you have a cluster up and running on GKE. So with that as our starting point, what we're there going to demonstrate is deploying a three node Yugabyte uh, DB cluster. We're then going to build the Northwind sample database. We'll then install Hasura. We'll configure the connectivity between Hasura and Yugabyte DB. We'll then get into the UI and then we'll build a simple test query to show you that uh, data is moving backwards and forwards between Hasura as well as Yugabyte. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, so to start with, we are in the Google Cloud uh, Platform UI, and we've got a Kubernetes cluster already up and running, and I'm in the, uh, in the terminal. The first step uh, to install Yugabyte DB is to add, uh, add the repo, and once we've done that, you can see that it's been confirmed that it has been added to our repositories. And then, of course, you're going to want to execute an update and once that successfully completes, the next thing that you want to do is go ahead and create your namespace. And in this case, our namespace is going to be yb-demo. All right, so at this point, we're ready to install Yugabyte DB using um, Helm. And I'm going to use uh, an installation that's uh, going to limit the amount of resources that are going to be available uh, to Yugabyte. I'm in a demo environment. I don't have a ton of resources, so I'm purposely limiting uh, the access of Yugabyte uh, to the app, to the resources that it can that it can access. You obviously don't want to do this in a production environment, but for the purposes of this demonstration, um, it's going to be perfectly fine. Once we get confirmation that the Yugabyte install has succeeded, the next thing we want to do is that we want to retrieve um, the status of the services, and more importantly, what we want to do is we want to look at what the external IP is that we want to use for connecting um, Hasura to. So we're specifically interested in um, this IP, and we're also interested in making sure that this port um, is good. And that's the port that we're going to use to uh, connect with. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is that we want to log into our Yugabyte T server pod. And once we successfully do that, now what we want to do is that we want to download um, two Northwind scripts. Uh, the first one is the one that's going to build um, all of our database objects like tables and, and foreign key relationships and things like that. And then the other one is going to be the script that's actually going to load all of the data um, into the Northwind um, database. So once we've succeeded with that, let's go ahead and exit out, get some more terminal real estate um, here. Now what we want to do is that we want to log into what we call the YSQL uh, shell. Uh, so in this shell, this is where we're going to start executing SQL commands and things like that. Uh, and so what we want to do first is go ahead and uh, 
create the Northwind database. And for those of you that are not familiar with the Northwind database, it's, uh, it's a database, sample database, that has been around for quite some time. Um, and what it does is that it simulates a company that uh, deals in specialty food products and ships them all over uh, the world. Okay, so we've gone ahead and created our database. Next thing we wanna do is we wanna change into the Northwind database. So now that we're there, we're ready to go ahead and execute the scripts uh, that we need in order to build the database. In this case, we're uh, gonna be building all of our tables. All right, so once all of our uh, database objects have been created, we're ready to actually go ahead and load those tables with data. All right, so at the conclusion of executing both of those scripts, we can do two simple checks, right? The first one is gonna make sure that um, all of the tables that we want are there, and it looks like uh, that is good. And then we could just do a quick spot check on one of the tables to make sure we've got uh, data. And you can see we've got data in our products table. I'm gonna assume we have data uh, in the rest of our tables as well. Okay, so now the next thing that we're ready to do is go ahead and set up Hasura. All right, so let's go ahead and exit the YSQL uh, terminal, get a little bit more real estate. Now what we need to do is download two YAML files uh, from Asura. That's our first one. And then let's go ahead and download the second one. Now that's done, get a little bit more real estate. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is to go ahead and um, edit the deployment.yaml file, and you can choose kind of your, uh, your favorite editor uh, for doing that, but we're just gonna go ahead and use um, Vim for this one. And the change that you wanna make is going to be uh, here. You wanna make sure that uh, this information here, this connect string um, is accurate. So for us, if you remember previously when we looked at the, uh, at the IP address, um, it's different than what's here. So our IP address, let's go ahead and 193.251.99. And you can see that the, um, that the port assignment is correct and that we're connecting to the Northwind database. It's the default Yugabyte DB user and there is no password. So with that, we should be able to save out the file and now proceed to the next step. So in the next step, what we want to do is to Go ahead and create that YAML file. Then we want to create the second YAML file. Okay, so with the Hasura service created, we're now ready to go ahead and retrieve the Hasura external IP. And this is the information that we're gonna need uh, to use when we uh, go to access the Hasura console. So let's do that next. Okay, so now that we're in the Hasura console, uh, let's navigate first to the data tab. And from the data tab, what I like to do is go ahead and uh, track all my tables. And you can see these are the tables that are in the Northwind uh, database. And the last item here is going to be, let's go ahead and track all of our foreign key relationships. Okay, so at this point, we're ready to click back over to the uh, IDE portion of the console. So to recap where we are so far is that we've installed a Postgres compatible three node Yugabyte DB cluster on top of Google Kubernetes engine. We've also installed and configured Hasura uh, to connect to a sample database uh, that we've uh, built on Yugabyte called Northwind, and it's got a variety of tables, data, and relationships, and those are now accessible to us here. You can see them in the um, Explorer tree. So the next step is we're just gonna do a simple test uh, to make sure that we can pull uh, data out of the database. And we're not gonna do anything crazy sophisticated. Let's just go ahead and pull out uh, the company name, the contacts, as well as the country um, where that uh, customer is. We execute the query we've got data, we know the fundamentals are working. So in the next video, uh, we'll show you how to do more advanced uh, things like complex selects, uh, mutations, as well as subscribing to data changes. But for now, that's all you need. 
So for a complete write-up on uh, what you just saw in the video, as well as how to do basic CRUD operations, um, we have a blog post that we wrote on the topic. So probably just do a simple search, Euclidebyte DB, GraphQL, CRUD. Um, it'll take you to this blog post and it'll walk you step by step through everything that we just showed in this video, as well as how to perform basic um, CRUD operations, which we'll show how to do uh, in a later video. Uh, but for now, that's it. Um, if you got any questions about Yugabyte or how Yugabyte interfaces with GraphQL, uh, make sure to head on over to our Slack channel. Uh, that's where we hang out and talk about all things Yugabyte and technologies related uh, to Yugabyte. Engineers are standing by uh, to help you out. And if you like what you see, we always appreciate a star on GitHub. So until next time, we'll see you. Thank you.